After the 2001 release of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, its success showed that Interplay had something big on their hands and wasted no time in using the Dark Alliance game engine. Even though that engine belonged to Snowblind Studios, which led to a big lawsuit against Interplay, since they used the engine on some games without Snowblind's permission, such as the GameCube port of Dark Alliance, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, and the subject of today's episode, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, which was now developed by Black Isle Studios. However, we'll get back to that part later at the end. For now, let's not waste any more time, since really there's not much else left to tell, and get right into Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. Dark Alliance 2 picks up immediately where the first game left off, with our three heroes teleporting through a portal and are instantly captured by a vampire named Mordok. Back at Baldur's Gate, our five new heroes are brought together by fate when they team up to take out a gang of marauders that were preying on the trade route. From there, they enter the titular city looking for jobs to earn some coin, not knowing that Destiny has big plans for them. If you're looking for a fresh new story from the first entry, you might be slightly disappointed as Dark Alliance 2, while having some fresh faces to go along with the original, does kind of follow the same beats and feels like a slight retread. But given how good the first game's story was, that's not bad at all. Now go ahead and stay with that feeling because gameplay is also pretty much the same, but with some new touches. It's still a top-down action RPG where you choose your character at the beginning and take them through a four-chapter journey killing evil and looting treasures. The cast of five characters include Dorn, the human barbarian, Hydra, a drow monk, Suron, a moon elf necromancer, Borador, a dwarven rogue, and Alessia, the human cleric, who I chose for this review. Each character has their own style of combat as well as traits and spells that they can use that level up and get stronger with enough experience gained, like Alessia being able to heal and turn away the dead with her cleric abilities. Just like the first DA, the game is for the most part linear with a few side quests you can take on if you wish. There's also a shop where you can buy and sell weapons, armor, and items, with a new feature allowing to create custom weapons and armor with runestones and gems that you come across that boost the stats of said item. Two-player co-op has also returned, and like most games in this genre, the players are tethered to each other so they can't wander off too far. However, in a positive change, experience is split 50-50 regardless of who landed the final blow, as well as 50-50 shared treasure. You can also import a previous Dark Alliance 2 character into a new game, so that way you don't have to make a new character if you don't want to. Truthfully, the only thing I can say is, if you played and loved Dark Alliance 1, you're gonna love 2, as it's the same, but with new improvements, and I can't argue with that. Visuals, while for the most part look to be about the same, kind of feel like they took a bit of a hit, more so in the character design. The stages look fine, but the character models just seem downgraded to me, especially when you go back and look at Dark Alliance 1. Maybe it's due to a different developer, I'm not sure, but it's still a great game to look at. Audio-wise, the music's still epic and orchestral as is fitting for a fantasy adventure, and the voice acting, while having some big-name vocal talents, isn't as good as the first, it's just... okay. Ah, you finally arrived. I do hope my creations haven't given you too much trouble. Hmm, lovely, aren't they? It took me years to perfect the technique to successfully transfer limbs and organs from one creature to the next. What does it matter? Perhaps hundreds died for me to learn this, but it was a small price to pay in the name of science. But you shouldn't concern yourself over the welfare of others. Your thoughts should lie in the here and now. I've used this term quite a bit when reviewing sequels on the channel, and I feel that it applies here on Dark Alliance 2. It just feels more like an expansion than a true sequel. The same core experience that made the first Dark Alliance so fun to play is retained here, and with the new enhancements, makes playing with a friend even better than before. It goes without saying that Dark Alliance 2 is worth the pickup. However, it may not be as easy as this one's a bit on the pricey side as of late, ranging from 20 to 30 bucks. I mean, yeah, that doesn't seem like a lot compared to other expensive games out there, but for Xbox, it's pricey. Though, there may be a silver lining to all of this. 
Not too long ago, Black Isle released a remaster of the first A Dark Alliance to PC and current consoles at the time of this recording, with the mention that talks were being made to give Part 2 the same treatment. So there is hope. Going back to what we were talking about in the beginning, Black Isle Studios was working on a third installment in the Dark Alliance series when the lawsuit between Snowblind and Interplay happened, resulting in the game, as well as Fallout Brotherhood of Steel 2 and Fallout 3, well, Interplay's Fallout 3, being cancelled, as Interplay was allowed to only publish current projects using Snowblind's engine and not any future endeavors. Sadly, that would be the end of the Dark Alliance story. Well... Sort of. In 2021, Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance was announced and released on June 22nd for PC and consoles, and while it's not Dark Alliance 3, it's instead a spiritual sequel to that series, with four-player co-op play. While we'll probably never get the conclusion to the Dark Alliance trilogy, at least we have something new to give us that great feeling we had traveling to Baldur's Gate once again. And so, the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance story is officially over. Kind of a fun uh, romp to go through. But with that, this is the Dolly Popka. And as always, stay green, my friends. I'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and want more of me and the Big Green, then click that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when new content arrives. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons for helping not just the channel grow, but me as a creator. You have my forever thanks. If you're interested in the channel and would like to help it grow further, consider becoming a patron today. For the cost of a soda or an item on the dollar menu, you can help myself and the channel provide the best source of big green programming and more. Once again, all the thanks and love.